all right my friends so welcome back so in this part two of my saml related video i'm going to show you how my application works so i have given the uh, link to my project in the description of this video and you can clone this particular uh, github project and import it in the eclipse so i have already done this at my and then i have actually config configured the tomcat so i'll be deploying this war file on my top tomcat instance uh, uh, java resources if you uh, i was talking about some configuration so this is where i have given the the properties that are the defaults uh, if you have to change anything like the port you you will have to change this port and rebuild the whole project to our file and then deploy it again all right so i'm just gonna go ahead because i have already deployed this project various time i'm gonna start my tomcat now and i have some listeners actually in the web application so they just pick some default values that i have set what this application does is actually this would put the and the properties file into the working sorry the user home folder actually so it would be like the your home folder and there would be app dot properties file which would be the default values that would be loaded they would be actually put inside over there in that directory all right so now my application is running it's deployed in tomcat and this is the page so um before we actually talk about and see what, how it's all working i uh, let me tell you how uh, a brief uh, you know the fundamentals how it all works so service provider is one application it might be a web application and identity provider is uh, it's a different app application it it is uh, it has some part of web application as well yeah but yeah that's a different application so, so these are two different applications and these two are on se separate domains and when we talk about web browser profiles in that case the two uh, domains would not be able to you know provide the communication information any kind of you know cookie they they won't be able to exchange cookies because they are on different domains so cross domain cookies uh, communication would not be possible here so if i have to provide send one uh, you know information from one domain to another what options do i have of course uh, what i could do is uh, of course i could redirect and redirect how i can in in the redirect url i can specify one parameter so that way i could reach to different domain and the other way what i could do is actually i can just submit a form with some parameters and uh, I, if i don't want that user uh, should be you know user should interfere so what i can do i can just apply a script to auto submit the form as soon as the page is loaded so it would go on a different domain as soon as the page is loaded and the form would be submitted itself so it uses javascript a bit of in in the page when when it's loaded so from one domain to another these are the two mechanism one is redirect and the other is the form submission so that's all uh, that's all the whole saml authentication is all about so the thing is we will send a request authentication request to one application and that application would be idp and idp once authenticates the most important part here is the authentication has to be done by the idp right so that's up to idp how how it does the authentication maybe it it checks for some kind of kerberos uh, ticket it 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 asks for kerberos related information 
uh, it asks you for providing username and password it might even ask you the certificate uh, you know so it's up to IDP how the authentication is performed for the user that is trying to access some resource on the service provider so service provider what what that what it does is it redirects to the IDP it might redirect or it might even you know use the HTTP post uh, in the form of uh, you know just auto submit the form element on the page so these are the two mechanisms HTTP redirect HTTP post now the IDP would you know uh, perform the authentication and then finally if the authentication is successful it would return the response and response will have the assertion as well that would be used by service provider and how the service provider processes the you know the response the assertion that's up to service provider but if it's valid service provider will definitely you know let the user to go through and provide the all the secure resources so what i have at identity tester that i have named it so this is let's say this is the service provider this act as a service provider the moment i click on these links the three links it would go to the other part of the application that would be like idp here i won't uh, you know uh, pre present any screen like username password or anything i'll just show on the idp side i'll just show what was sent in the in the authentication request like id and you know destination url and all those attributes that are present in the authentication request and i will also show the assertion or the response that i will be uh, you know sending to the original service provider only say this is a page or i should say the server like so let's do this at this point of time if i see my plugin the saml plugin so i'll just remove all the stored messages so i don't have one anymore so let's trigger the so first one would be http redirect the authentication request would be sent using http redirect so there must be something in the you know the url browser url and then this uh, would go you know this would send the idp would send the http post okay let's do this so we see that saml request parameter is here and this is the encrypted xml authentication request that i can see in the browser all right so if whenever if uh, the plugin is installed and the plug this particular extension sees a camel request name parameter it will try to decode the value of that parameter and it will show the actual xml that was encoded so this is my authentication request as i told you earlier i said i'm just passing the authentication like you now request xml and this is what i sent actually when i clicked on that particular you no know, link on my say service provider now i will continue with redirect and now i'm back to the service provider landing page and how this plugin get to know this whenever there is a form parameter with the uh, with the name saml response it will try to decode it and this is the decoded you know xml that we get from the idp so yes so this is still working okay the plugin is able to capture our uh, you know all the messages that, that were passed through, through the browser so it's working fine now i go back i okay one thing that's working I, I i just want to assure you that it's working perfectly fine so what we see here is the redirect binding so my http redirect is actually it's working perfectly fine and the plugin as well is uh, you know it it recognizes it as redirect binding and if, if i see the response the response was via post binding so yeah we had redirect and the post now let me quickly
I stored them. You know, the, the stored messages have been cleared. So let me try HTTP post. So the request uh, authentication request would be HTTP post, and the response would also be HTTP post. Similar thing that's going to happen. Continue with post, and I see the the request was through via post binding. Similar, and the response was via post binding, and that's that's working fine again. The third one is actually a artifact, uh, HTTP artifact binding. What happens is sometimes the, just because of some security reasons, we don't want the assertion, the actual response, the user or the subject confirmation should go through browser. We don't want that just because of security reasons. So instead of uh, that, what we, what happens is an assertion is a piece of information that is sent to the service provider. And now service provider directly fetches it, you know, retrieves it from the identity provider and it happens through. So, so yeah, the request would be sent, but the, instead of actual response, an artifact would be sent. And based on artifact, the response would, actual assertion would be retrieved from IDP directly through. So, so here the plugin would not be able to capture, it will capture just the authentication request, but not the response. So yeah, I will only show the authentication. It's no response. All right. So yeah. So you can verify the working of this uh, sample application, and definitely, if you are able to go through the source, then this would give you, you know, very good understanding how everything works in SAML. And even if you want to, you know. Uh, build some functionality in the in any you know product it's really good to start with this it uses open saml libraries and not much code is here you can easily go through these hope you like this video if you have any questions you can definitely just uh, put those questions over the comment i'll try to answer them thank you very much